Hi guys, my name is Tom and I'm the Tech Chap and this is my re-review of the Samsung Galaxy S6. Now this is way over its half-life cycle, so uh, next March in 2016 presumably we'll be getting the Samsung Galaxy S7, which should be exciting, but since this has been my daily driver since its own launch in March 2015, I'd like to give you my impressions, both good and bad, of the S6 um, this far on. And also the fact that this, you can now buy this for around £350 or about $550, it's significantly cheaper than it was at launch. So is it still a great phone? Can I still recommend it to you? And what are my long-term impressions? So nine or so months on, I'm still being impressed by how it looks and feels to use. The S6 obviously was a big departure, a big upgrade from the S5 in terms of uh, aesthetics and style, and I really am a big fan still of how it looks. It's incredibly thin, it's uh, pretty light as well, and although the camera just protrude, uh, some people felt, felt that that would be an issue, it might scratch the lens, it might, uh, you know, since it's proud, it might uh, bang against things, but in my experience it hasn't. Uh, I'm actually, I live life on the edge, uh, I don't use a, use a case because I, uh, I actually enjoy the look uh, and the uh, sort of the feel of the phone a bit more than I think uh, the added security of a case gives you if you're someone who would worry about, worries about scratches or dents of course so I should always recommend a case but I, I tend to be quite careful you know I always uh, grab a, have a firm grip on my phone as I pull out of my pocket so I've not had any catastrophic drops I've dropped it a couple of times and there's a few little nicks in the corner but generally it's held up very well despite not using a case so despite having a glass front and back uh, it's been re reasonably sturdy and I haven't had any major issues, although I've been quite careful with it. Uh, as well as that, the uh, thin bezels, the uh, thin and lightweight design overall means it is still, uh, although it's 5.1 inches, it is still a one-handed device in my opinion. Uh, this really is the top end of what I think one-handed devices are. As soon as you get to 5.5 inches and beyond, you're definitely going to be uh, using two hands. So uh, for someone who likes the portability of a one-handed device, but also a, a nice big uh, 5.1 inch screen, this is the perfect uh, in between for me, best of both worlds. Speaking of the screen, the 5.1 inch Quad HD Super AMOLED display is still one of the best parts of the phone and I think one of the best screens I've ever seen, even to this day. It's super sharp and crisp, the colors really pop. A lot of people think uh, that uh, Samsung uh, display colors are, uh, are oversaturated and unnatural. And uh, although they can be, you can change in the options what sort of uh, display mode you'd like. Uh, gone are the days of premier, previous AMOLEDs where they've just been really, really far too punchy and vibrant. This actually technically is a very accurate screen and actually one of the best and most accurate screens you can buy. This does have a Quad HD display and uh, a lot of people ask, you know, can you tell the difference uh, at, this, at this screen size? And my honest opinion after having used it for quite a long time is I don't think I can tell. Uh, sometimes I do sort of put my eye right up to the text just to see if I can make out pixels and think, oh bloody hell, that is sharp. But I have to be honest, I think uh, unless you're talking about 5.5 inches and above, uh, it's more of a luxury at this size. It's not really something I think you'll notice. That's, well, it's not something you'll notice every day, certainly, and uh, even if you do try hard to look for it, it's something that perhaps it's a placebo effect. The fact that you know it's there, you think, oh, it must be a sharper display. As a result, I honestly don't think you can really tell. So uh, if you're looking at a, a phone, but you're not sure because it hasn't got a Quad HD whether you'll be sort of uh, losing out uh, at this sort of screen size, then I wouldn't worry about that at all. So what's it like using the S6? Well, in my original review when this came out, I described its performance as flawless. A couple of people in the comments of that video said I was going a little bit too far, and I think in hindsight I probably was going a bit too far. Although at the time, it did actually feel noticeably faster than it does now. I'm not sure whether that's a result of just uh, general use, putting apps on it, but uh, I've noticed this has become uh, a bit more sluggish, a bit less uh, nippy than it was at launch. Um, it may t it occasionally takes an extra second or so to go back to the home screen. Uh, you know, opening apps is still very fast. You can still get a very impressive frame rate in high-end games. It is, of course, one of the most, if not the most powerful phone you can buy. The Exynos 7420 chip and three gigs of RAM inside do a great job and uh, in the benchmarks and general high-end performance really blows away anything else. But it's this general sort of, I think, maybe touch whiz performance, just the general browsing every day that I'm starting to notice is just not quite as fast as it used to be. It's still very fast, of course, just not the flawless that I described it as in the original review. It could be an issue with the TouchWiz software, which has always been a bit of a, a hog. And, and speaking of hogs, the, uh, the three gigabytes of RAM is almost constantly being used at about 2.2, 2.3 gigabytes. I think that's a, a common issue currently with the S6, that most of the RAM is just being used all the time. So that leaves quite a, not a lot left. 
uh, for general multitasking, for general uh, smooth, consistent performance. So that could also be uh, why this is happening. I, I do occasionally use an app called Crop Cleaner, which I highly recommend on the phone. It's also on the desktop PC, and that sort of uh, gets rid of a lot of the uh, cached stuff, a lot of stuff you don't need, and sort of frees up some uh, memory as well as storage. So I'd recommend doing that from time to time. But uh, generally, the performance is still uh, very impressive, just not quite as fast, in my opinion, as it once was, for whatever reason that is. One of the most exciting features of the S6 when it was first released was the upgraded 16 megapixel camera, and this is still the best uh, part of the phone, in my opinion. Photos and videos are great looking, probably as a result of uh, both the high megapixel count, the f1.9 aperture, which is really wide, so loads of light can come in, and also the fact that this can do uh, things like Quad HD, 4K recording, also has optical image stabilization throughout. So uh, very, very impressive technically, and I think uh, the uh, proof in the pudding, the, the pictures themselves look fantastic. The colors really pop, and especially the combination of the, uh, the great camera on the great screen makes browsing through your uh, gallery just really an exceptional experience. It's really nice to uh, look at, look back through your photos and videos. Everything pops really well. It looks great. You can zoom in and you don't lose too much detail. So still, I think the best camera on a smartphone you can buy. I have uh, recently tested the iPhone 6S um, and obviously that is extremely close to this and trades blows in some regards and many will prefer how it looks. There is a quite a definite um, difference in color, but I prefer this overall in my personal taste. And so I still think uh, even next to the LG G4 and the uh, most recent Nexus 5X and 6P that this has the best smartphone camera so far of 2015, which I'm still really impressed about. My biggest gripe with the S6, having used it as my daily driver for nearly nine months, is the battery life. Unfortunately, it's extremely average. I'm not sure how anything can be so extremely average, perhaps even poor, uh, but uh, it really does struggle to get through a full day. If I'm going out for a meeting, if I'm on the train for a day, if I'm going to an event, uh, then I will really be worrying about this pretty much all day, and uh, it won't last me beyond, say, 5, 6 p.m., assuming it has, say, 100% at maybe 9 a.m. Uh, I don't do a lot with it. I don't actually have any games on my phone. That's mainly for what my tablet's for. Um, my phone is just for web browsing, for text, for social media, and the odd bit of music through Spotify, uh, which I grant you does take up quite a bit of battery. Uh, but generally, it's pretty poor, and it's something I really wish I could just have a removable battery for. If I could just hot swap out a battery uh, towards the end of the day, that would solve, my, uh, solve everything completely. But of course, that's the uh, that's what we've had to put up with as a result of having the nicer um, aesthetics for the phone. So battery life is still very poor. The one saving grace, is, of course, is the wireless, which I'm not, uh, I don't tend to use that much, uh, but also the fast charging. And the fast charging is very impressive. It can get to about 30% battery in about 15 minutes, which is going to be just sort of just enough uh, as, long, as long as you then ration it with power saving to get you through the rest of the day. So uh, assuming you have a fast uh, power charger with you, uh, that really does help out and mitigate the uh, generally very average battery life. So in my next phone, my, my, my next full proper daily driver phone, whatever it may be, battery life is something I'm gonna be looking for more above anything else because uh, I do, I am a little bit disappointed with that on this and I would say that it's my biggest gripe with the S6. So I'm still a big fan of the S6. It's still my everyday phone. I still really like it. I still occasionally just sort of look at it because it's really a very smart looking device. I think the black sapphire color, which has almost a blue tint to it, looks great. Uh, and although it's a bit of a fingerprint magnet uh, overall, it's still one of the nicest looking phones I've ever used. And I really still highly recommend it, especially now it's a lot cheaper. You can buy this for around 350 pounds or around $550, give or take. I'll put links to, uh, um, you can, to Amazon where you can buy that in the description below. And I would still, highly recommended. It's not the perfect phone as I say, there's a couple of issues mainly with the battery and uh, the performance perhaps isn't as stellar as it used to be but uh, it's still of course very impressive and very fast overall. I think another reason why I still recommend this is the competition really hasn't been that strong this year. Uh, we've got the LG G4, the HTC One M9, they're both solid phones, the G4 is better than the M9 I'd say, uh, and now we've got the new Nexus 5X and 6P which sort of go against it but so the uh, most recent reports and uh, my early testing of it indicates that the camera and the battery are, are a little bit average on both those devices so this does still uh, beat them in the camera and also uh, in other regards. So generally I would still recommend this, this is a great phone now at its lower price, I think it represents pretty good value for money actually, uh, which it certainly didn't I don't think at the uh, at launch but now uh, I can highly recommend it for its current price. So if you're in the market for a what I would still describe as a flagship phone and uh, a great camera, uh, nice uh, looking device and uh, pretty solid UI is something that uh, appeals to you as well as of course the 
fingerprint reader and uh, all the other bits and bobs you get with it, then I would still highly recommend the S6 and uh, as it is still a flagship, even though it's not sort of nine months in and we're expecting the S7 perhaps in about four uh, or so months in March 2016. So despite it uh, you know, being a bit long in the tooth, arguably by given the uh, sixth month or annual cycles of these phones, it's still holding up very well, largely as I say, due to a lack of really strong competition this year. The other big question I often get is, uh, would you get the S6 or the S6 Edge? I have used both and I still prefer the S6. I grant you on a desk or just holding it in your hand, an S6 Edge does look a bit nice. It looks a bit more futuristic with its uh, rounded curved screen, but generally it's actually a bit less comfortable to use. The corners are thinner, the glass uh, comes further down, and as a result you can't get quite such a good grip on it and it sort of stabs into your hand a little bit. And it's certainly less comfortable to hold than this. And also the uh, curved screens really add very little proper functional uh, difference. You have those sort of uh, notification lights and quick access to apps, but in reality, I've never wanted to use those. I don't know anyone who does, uh, and it's a bit gimmicky, if I may say so. So I would still recommend the S6. It's also cheaper, of course, than the S6 Edge, um, so if you're wondering about that. So this has been my re-review of the S6 Edge. Of course, I'll bring you the full review of the new S7 whenever it comes out. I look forward to that. But in the meantime, this is still a very solid phone and one I highly recommend despite its average battery life. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this. Thank you very much for watching. Please do like and subscribe, and I'll catch you again on the Tech Chat. Cheers, guys.